We are at a critical point in Palantir's journey because after a great start to the year, seeing the stock go up almost 60%, the stock has basically sputtered down almost 20% from those dizzying highs. But the good news is there is actually more good news coming in ahead of earnings and we are seeing exactly who we want to see buy the stock up. But is another big move actually coming for Palantir or are we set up for a little bit more pain coming here in the future? So let's talk about all of that today, get you guys answers right after you hit that like button if you like getting the truth about the hype because that's exactly what you're gonna get today. So we are seeing exactly who we want to buy up the stock. We are seeing institutional buyers starting to buy more and more of Palantir. So let's look at this latest release right here. The asset manager of Norway's largest bank just cut back on some of the members of the Magnificent Seven making a big bet on a tech company outside of the group. DMB Asset Management cut positions in Apple and more than doubled the stake in data analytics firm Palantir Technologies in the first quarter. DMB disclosed the stock trades, among others, in a format filed with the SEC. It is a good sign whenever you see larger asset managers like this one basically buy into Palantir and basically reposition in a different direction than what they're positioned in right now. So this is good news all the way around. We're seeing more institutions buying and less of the traders buying into the stock and kind of playing their little games with Palantir and all the other things that they like to do. We're seeing less and less of that happen. This is exactly what we talked about when we talk about the stock being trader controlled before they're profitable, starting to move over to that other side where they're less and less trader controlled. Again, we're more than a year into that journey there and we're not all the way there yet, but we're seeing strides happen and things happen with Palantir that is starting to show that that is exactly what's happening. It's a long process, it doesn't happen over months, it happens over years, and we're seeing continual movement in that direction for Palantir. So that's all good news right there. And because this is a good move, that means an explosive move is getting ready to happen once again, right? I mean, that's exactly what should happen when you see Palantir have big institutions continue to move into it at this particular pace and you kind of see it kind of accelerating a little bit. We're set up for another big move, right? This is where the bulls in the stock have it all wrong. Even if we see a huge move up like we saw at the beginning of the year happen again, it is not a sustainable move by any stretch of the imagination. So let's break down each one of these point by point. There's actually three of them we're gonna talk about here. And you're going to get the truth without the hype on these. And then I will tell you exactly where I see the stock going by the end of the year as well. So. Again, a lot to get in here too, but let's tackle these bull points one by one and see where we end up. Number one, boot camps are accelerating. Now we are seeing an explosion in boot camps. That thing, that sales team is just cranking on all cylinders. They continue to kind of uh, say that they have so many scheduled and there's more and more of them coming. We are seeing explosive growth in boot camps. I would agree there completely, but there's one big problem with all this that everybody seems to conveniently ignore when we're talking about, I shouldn't say everyone, most folks, especially the extremely bullish folks, tend to miss this whenever we're talking about Palantir on that other side. And that is that the boot camps take time to go from basically boot camp over here to a very large contract over here that hits the bottom line. And that is what matters in the end. Everything else in between takes a lot of time and it's not hitting the bottom line. More importantly, that sales process is really, really long. That makes perfect sense. I understand exactly why it's there. I think it's highly effective. But when you see numbers today about boot camps, don't think, oh boy, that I should add that into my valuation right now. One, we don't know what the conversion rate's actually gonna be. And two, the sales process is at a point to where some of the big numbers hitting the bottom line, not getting signed, not getting inked, the actual dollars coming in and going to that bottom line. And a lot of cases are, you know, a year away or so, which means it won't translate the bottom line profit until next year. And Wall Street's not going to give us credit this year, especially early in the year like we are, for something that's gonna happen next year. So you gotta kinda understand that when we're talking about this, that yes, that is great. Yes, I agree, it eventually translates there, but trying to extrapolate out what that means in the meantime, how large those contracts are gonna be and everything else is a lot of guesswork and not nearly as much uh, solid fundamental analysis that you can do to actually get a good number there. So it makes it really, really hard to project. And more importantly, Wall Street is not going to give us credit for it today for something that's gonna come next year, possibly two years into the future, whatever the case is. So you have to understand that with this stock and exactly when I'm excited that the boot camps are going great, but I also understand the dynamic with the boot camps and understand that we're not gonna see anything tangible for a long time. So I need to kind of temper my um, enthusiasm with those boot camps and understand they're playing a much longer game and I need to be more patient with the stock more importantly as they play that game. Number two, Palantir is cheap compared to where it'll be in 2030. This is one that I see recited repeatedly to me in the comments, DMs, you know, in our group and such as we're kind of talking about this. 
people are projecting and looking out on Palantir and thinking it's a great deal today because by 2030, XYZ will happen and all this stuff like that, which I'm not saying is not possible. It absolutely is possible, but you guys know anything beyond this year, maybe the following year is a pure guess, much less 2030. When you're looking out at 2030, it is pure and utter speculation, which reminds me so much of Tesla. It's not even funny. Basically just ignore the next two years and speculate on this incredible future coming a decade from now. The big problem with doing that, even though I believe in Palantir over the long term, over the next decade, I absolutely agree, but the big problem with doing that, basically you ignore fundamentals and valuation today in exchange for that future that is unknown at that stage. And when you do that, that is exactly how you end up buying Palantir at 30 and $40 in 2021, instead of understanding valuation and being patient and waiting for that better pricing. Now, obviously I'm not talking about focusing on the day movements and what Wall Street's doing today with it and such, but you can definitely use fundamental analysis for the next year or two and get a pretty good baseline as to what you should pay for Palantir. And you're probably going to see that price at some point in time in that time frame. But using a 2030 projection to justify significantly overpaying and ignoring the fundamentals today is a big, big problem. And that is how retail routinely buys high. And then, of course, when it comes back down to fair value or down below fair value, because Wall Street gets dumb, you end up selling low. That's the exact scenario you end up in. I own Palantir in my main portfolios. But the real question is, is it going to make my $250 legacy portfolio challenge? Where I'm starting from zero and just using $250 a week I'm going to build a six figure and beyond portfolio in real time just for you guys. So if you want to see if Palantir is one of those stocks that I choose to put in that portfolio to grow it, make sure you check out the pinned comment down there and get your founder's price of just $15 because once those spots are all gobbled up, it goes back to normal price there. And so you want to make sure you get your spot before that price goes up. And for those of you guys that want a full membership, you want to see my complete watch list with price targets to include Palantir. And you want to see all my buys in real time for all the portfolios that I have, dividend portfolio, my other portfolios. And you also want access to free coaching, free courses, the best six, seven, eight figure discount out there and so much more. Make sure you check out the pinned comment down there and take advantage of the sale for both. Get it to your founder spot or the sale price for my regular group and see if a membership's right for you. It'll be the pinned comment down there. All right, so number three, Palantir is a growth beast. All right, now for me, I agree that Palantir will be a growth beast, but that is in the future. It is not a growth beast today. And let me explain this before you go yelling at me or getting angry at me or anything else like that. Let me explain to you why I'm saying that. Management has guided to a roughly a 20% growth rate. And that is what management told me. And I'm sorry, that is not explosive growth. That is not the type of growth that is going to justify the multiple that it's currently trading at right now where it's at with its current earnings. It's just not. Even at a 30% growth rate, it is hard to justify this multiple at this particular price. So this isn't me being bearish or anything else like that. But when I hear growth beast, I'm sorry, 20% is not a number that goes along with a growth beast, even though I like them. I like their slow, steady pace that they're doing. I think it's very consistent. I think it's very predictable, which I like in a stock because it makes it very, very easy to identify hype runs and more importantly, discounts whenever we get discounts on the stock. But to call it a growth beast and have put all these ridiculous growth rates to it and such when management has guided to none of that, I'm just simply taking what management has told me and giving you guys the truth. Hey, Palantir is not a mature company to where a 20% growth rate would be incredible. We're still kind of putting it in that high growth, early stage growth category over here. And according to management, not Luke, Luke's not saying this, according to management, we're not getting growth beast numbers yet. Now, do I think that comes in the future with everything? It's kind of like, are they laying the groundwork for that? That's what I believe that they're doing. That's kind of what it is. But I can't base my entire thesis on a growth rate that I don't know if they're going to, all this groundwork's actually going to pay off. I don't know specifically what Wall Street's going to be willing to pay for that in the future either. So I have to deal with the facts as management gives them to me right now and understand that's exactly what Wall Street and exactly what institutional investors are looking at as well. I can assure you they're not making these ridiculous projections out to 2040 with these ridiculous growth rates. They're not doing that. So although I think Palantir has a potential to be a huge growth beast in the future, I would agree there. It does not make it certain or something that I should plan on, bank on, and then justify overpaying for the stock and ignore all everything that we're talking about today and ignore the current growth rate, which is not an incredible beast growth rate. It's a very good growth rate, but it's not this incredible beast growth rate like I hear a lot of folks out there preaching. So where do I see the stock price going this year? If I simply look at what I feel a fair multiple is for the stock and I extrapolate out what management told me was going to happen this year in regards to EPS estimates and gross estimates and everything else like that, 
that puts Palantir solidly in the mid 20s or so in regards to price. Yes, I understand that the stock basically rocketed up right past that. I mean, it was marching right on to 30. It shot up right above that. But that doesn't mean that the fundamentals of the company have changed. Just like whenever a stock trades down, it's not like if Palantir were to go to $7, but nothing changed in regards to earnings. Earnings continue to click right along as they're right on pace for their guidance for the year and everything else like that. Fundamentals didn't change. That just means massive opportunity. And the same exact thing replies in the reverse, just simply for the fact that the stock runs up, you know, way past where, you know, I feel fair value should be there at the year. Doesn't mean, oh, oh, well, now all of a sudden there's just a higher multiple, higher everything else. Ignore all the fundamentals and ignore the multiples and everything else. And it's just now it's a $40 stock because it ran up X amount at the beginning of the year, which means it's going to continue to run that amount to the end of the year. That's silly talk. That's that 2021 garbage coming out. That is not actual investing. Eventually, with all stocks, the fundamentals matter and they come back down to that fair value range. And sometimes, hey, you get a stock that just basically slow and steady right up to fair value and it, it stays very reasonably valued over the course of that year. Sometimes you get a giant rocket ship up right up to where fair value is at the end of the year and then it trades flat until the earnings basically catch up to the stock. And then you have other scenarios where it goes way above fair value at any point in time in its history. And then it's going to come down for a while before it finally hits that fair value mark. So you end up with, you know, a lot of different scenarios there that can happen. I have seen every single one of those happen with a multitude of stocks, sometimes the same exact stock. I can point to times where that happened with virtually any stock on the stock market, where we saw all three of those different journeys over the course of three different years with a particular stock. It happens and that's okay. The way you deal with it and the most important piece you have to understand, and that is why I teach this so much on this channel, it's my number one thing that I say, is you have to understand valuation in order to deal with those situations because you'll be able to deal with slow and steady and you'll be able to just execute your plan right to it. You'll be able to deal with because you understand valuation when it just runs up and away from you and you get that FOMO feeling and you wanna go there and you just know, hey, I have time, it's gonna come back down. I might get a discount, I might not, who knows, but at least I know where fair value is and where it's probably gonna come down to. Either way, when you have a valuation set for the stock, you know exactly what to do in every single scenario. I can walk you through all that through our coaching, through five courses, you get direct access to me. You can be a part of the best six, seven, and eight figure discord. All of them helping you figure it out as well. Check out the pinned comment down there and take advantage of the sale where you get not only all that, you also get my buy and sell alerts in real time. You get to see my watch list complete with price targets. You get to jump on our live Q and A's. We have live events. We have all kinds of things going on within the group. Make sure you check out the pinned comment down there, or maybe you still want to take advantage of the $250 legacy challenge. That's okay too. You absolutely can do that as well. Just check out the pinned comment down there and see if a membership's right for you. And click this video here if you want to see exactly what I'm buying in this market. And click here to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.